Welcome to another lesson from Transparent Physics in our Noobster class series on adding two-dimensional vectors. And this is this is going to be a fun one because we get to show the vector analysis table in action. Show you how it takes two non-perpendicular vectors and dices them and slices them, turns them into perpendicular vectors, and voila, we get our answer. And what better way to cheer the culmination of all of our efforts in this Noobster class than sharing a nice cup of tea as we go through this presentation. So feel free to pause the video, brew yourself a cup of tea, come on back and we will go through the sample together. Ah, tea. All right, we're going to take a look at the vector analysis table in action by adding two vectors together. And we're going to just sort of arbitrarily declare we have vector C and D. So vector C is going to be 450 kilometers at, let's say, 65 degrees. And uh, we'll just add some precision. If you're in a class where you're worried about significant digits, we'll just say they are precise to the ones. If you need to know what that means, you know what that means. And we'll say this is 700 kilometers at, uh, say, 160 degrees. We're interested in the resultant. So we're going to draw a quick set of axes in here and just sketch out what we think this is going to look like. Again, it's just a rough sketch. Uh, D is almost twice as long as C, and uh, the angles are where the angles are. So vector C kind of is going to look like this. Roughly, roughly speaking, vector C. And vector D is longer and not quite horizontal, so maybe like that. So that's vector D. And the resultant starts where we start, ends where we end, and it's going to be pointing in this direction. So this is vector R, this is what we're interested in. So it looks like R might be a touch longer than D. Uh, it's definitely, by the way this is drawn, it's definitely pointing in quadrant 2. So we'll have to remember when we get to the point to calculate the angles that we'll need to adjust that angle. So drawing a quick sketch like this gives us some useful information to lead in with. Next up, we're going to set up our vector analysis table. And the vector analysis table always has three columns, but the number of rows depends on how many vectors we have coming in here. So uh, we'll draw... give ourselves a little bit of room to breathe on this one I, in other future times drawing a vector analysis table I probably won't give quite as much space but gives us a little bit of room to work first time through okay uh, the leftmost column is reserved for the vector uh, in terms of its magnitude and angle the middle column is for the x component so that's vx equals v cosine theta and the y column is the one <laughs> the third column is the uh, y column where it's vy equals v sine theta so we can take our vectors drop them in the leftmost column so this is vector c which is 450 kilometers at 65 degrees and vector d is 700 kilometers uh, at 160 degrees and if you notice uh, again when we draw these out uh, the uh, this is the magnitude here and this is the angle so we always want to have the magnitude and the angle and um, you know when we're dealing with the magnitude we make sure we don't have any negatives and when we're dealing with the angle, we make sure they're with respect to the positive x-axis. So now we're going to plug in the values. So, and again, I, you know, in, once you get good at this, you don't need to write all these details down. But because we're still learning it, I'll, I'll be a little more detailed inside these boxes. So we have the idea that Cx so Cx equals C cosine theta 
and cy equals c sine theta. So that's the x and y components of vector c. Vector d, same equation, different letter, dx equals d cosine theta. And dy equals d sine theta. So we can plug those values in. In this case, it's going to be 450 kilometers times the cosine of 65 degrees. 450 kilometers times the sine of 65 degrees. 700 kilometers times the cosine of 160. And 700 kilometers times the sine of 160. Again, moving forward, I will probably just write the answers to these equations, but you know, it's good to practice. So now we break out our handy dandy calculator, see what we get. So we have 450 times the cosine of 65. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. And uh, I get a value 100. 90.2 kilometers. Uh, and that makes sense given the length of 450, you know, the X component, eh, that's, that, that probably makes sense. All right, next up, we're gonna take 450 times the sine of 65. Again, we expect this also to be positive and a little bigger, uh, and uh, it is. So this value here is 407.8 kilometers. In the D vector, 700 times the cosine of 160. Now we expect to see this is a negative answer and a pretty long answer too because uh, it's primarily a negative X vector in this case. So we get negative 600, ooh, let's get those colors right, negative 600 and 57.8 kilometers, run out of space, I apologize, and 700 times the sine of 160. And again, breaking these up into the XRY components, we've done this before. Now we're just doing a lot at the same time. So the vector analysis table helps keeps us organized. This is 239.4. So the important thing to recognize here is that one of these values is negative. The dx component uh, starts uh, at the uh, tip of C and goes to the left. So a left vector is negative and uh, that accounts for the fact that R ends up being negative too in the x direction. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these columns and we're gonna, we're gonna add them together. We're interested in Rx and Ry. So maybe, uh, picking some more colors out here, maybe we'll do Rx is here and Ry is here. So we wanna solve for Rx and Ry. Rx is gonna be the sum of the values in the X column. So so we have here, this is, this is our X column, and our X column is gonna give us the X values. And this double line here, I like to think of as an equal sign. So when uh, this is an equal sign, and we can imagine a big plus sign right here. So we add 190.2 to negative 657.8 to find out what the RX component is. And the Rx component, 190.2, 657.8. And that is a negative value. So we have Rx is negative 467.6 kilometers. Next up, we're interested in solving for the Ry. The Ry is the sum of the Y vectors. So we're interested in these guys being added together. And again, the double line indicates 
in my mind, an equal sign. And then again, we can imagine a plus where we add them together. So we have 407.8 plus 239.5. And we get, for RY, we get 647.2 kilometers. So what we have at this point is we have taken two vectors that are pointing in uh, non-perpendicular ways. We've broken them up into their X and Y components. We've added all the X components together, gotten one sort of super X. We've added all the Ys together, gotten one kind of super Y, and now we we just have a just have a triangle. Uh, if we can, you know, if we want to ignore everything else to this point, uh, now we just oh, that's a bad horizontal line. Okay, so we have R X, and we have R Y. So we have just created a uh, a triangle. That's R. So now we're just back to uh, was it lesson three, where we're building a resultant from two component vectors. So we're interested in the angle and the length. And we know that this is sitting in quadrant two, so we know we're gonna to need to make a correction. So when we solve for R, the magnitude, R, the magnitude is the same way we did it before. R is equal to the square root of Rx squared plus Ry squared. So in this case, uh, we have to be a little bit careful uh, because Rx is a negative quantity. So negative 467.6 kilometers squared plus 647.2 kilometers squared. Uh, just remember, whenever you take the square of a negative, the negative sign should go away. So just watch your calculator. Uh, make sure it does it right. Um, there is always the option of just pretending that you typed in the negative sign and you squared it and made it go away uh, just to save yourself any potential headache. Uh, but whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, when I solve this out, I get an answer for R of 798 point four kilometers um, so my sketch looks like it was a little bit off that's well maybe not too bad it's it's a little longer than D and uh, maybe you can make the argument that my R vector is a little longer than D but it's pretty close so maybe maybe the sketch isn't too bad on closer look uh, the next thing we have to do is solve for the angle remembering that the angle uh, is not going to be the right answer to begin with so we're actually going to start our equation with phi instead of theta. Stunt double, if you will. So the inverse tangent of ry over rx, gotta make sure we keep those negative signs in there as well, otherwise we're not gonna get the right answer. So ry is 647.2 kilometers divided by a negative 467.6 kilometers. And again, this is the RY and RX values. So we plug those into our calculator. The inverse tangent of 647.2 divided by 647.2 divided by a negative 467.6. And my calculator is giving me an answer of negative. 54.2 degrees and we know that negative 54.2 degrees cannot be the right answer because just a raw angle of negative 54 degrees would actually put us in quadrant four we see that we're in quadrant two so we know that we need to make that correction final value uh, theta equals 180 plus phi Harrison Ford is 180 plus the stunt double. So we take 180 plus a negative 54.2. That's gonna neatly pop us up into our second quadrant. 180 minus 54.2. And I'm 
getting an angle around 125.8. Okay, so our magnitude and our angle. I'm, I'm a little bit out of room to, to rewrite them. So when we take a look at this entire solution, again, there's a lot going on. But the nice thing is we, we really, uh, this entire process, we haven't done anything new. We haven't done anything new at all. The entire process is simply breaking vectors up into their X and Y components, reassembling them into a new resultant from the perpendicular vectors, and keeping in mind the whole time that we're referencing angles with respect to standard angles, the positive x-axis. Okay, what's not to like about being able to add non-perpendicular vectors? I don't know. Feel free to click that like button if you like to being able to do this too. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw in the video, leave them for me below. And to find out what's coming next from Transparent Physics and to help the channel grow, please consider clicking the subscribe button. And as always, I appreciate your time with this and all the lessons in this Noobster class series. There are a lot of moving pieces that have come together and uh, what you can accomplish now is pretty impressive. So I hope I've made adding non-perpendicular vector addition a little clearer for you in this lesson of transparent physics.